I'm sure I don't need to tell you what this instrument is. It's a recorder, or rather a Baroque recorder. In many European languages, um, the name for this instrument describes either the shape or the sound. So in German, it's called Blockflöte, um, and the block is this part of the recorder here. It's usually um, made from cedar wood, so darker wood. In French, it's called Flûte à bec, and bec meaning beak, so describing the shape of the mouthpiece. And in Italian, it would be called flauto, or sometimes flauto dolce, dolce meaning sweet, sweet sounding instrument. In English language, this instrument is either called the recorder or in fact the flute. So in the Baroque time, um, people would refer to this instrument as the flute, but as the flute as we know it today, so the transverse flute, became more and more popular, it became necessary to differentiate it from the other flute. So this would be called the common flute. We can trace that word back to Old French or Middle English, where to record meant to remember or to recite or repeat, um, which is exactly what minstrels, so musicians in the towns or at the courts, uh, would do using instruments like the recorder, so repeat melodies that were often passed on orally. Flute-like, pipe-like instruments have been around for ages. However, the first surviving recorders date from the early to mid 14th century. There are about 10 of those, um, but some of them only survive in parts or are very badly damaged because, of course, it's made, they're made from wood, which decays over time. Going into the Baroque period, there were a lot of changes made to the recorder. We think that these changes first happened in France at the court of Louis XIV, the Sun King, um, and in the orchestra of Lully. The most important changes were that the instrument now came in three pieces, or sometimes two in the smaller instruments, so it could be taken apart into a head joint, a body and the foot. The reason for this was mainly that it would allow um, for the instrument's intonation to be changed. So by pulling out the head joint slightly, I can make the pitch go lower, or by pushing it in fully, of course, it goes back to where it sat originally. Another change um, that is quite obvious from the outside is the fact that on the lowest two finger holes, so for fingers number six and seven as we call it, um, the holes are now double. Sometimes this also happened for the third finger hole here, so it would have been two finger holes there. And this change was also made to um, facilitate trills and also uh, the intonation of the lower chromatics. So if I wanted to play the lowest chromatic notes, this is now much, much easier than on Renaissance instruments, where there would have just been a quite a large hole. On the outside, looking at it, you can also tell that this is a Baroque model recorder because of these ornamental rings, this carving in the wood, both at the head joint and also at the foot. Sometimes these would have been made from a different material um, and we can see this development of having more ornamented, decorated um, instruments also looking at architecture or dress of the time, which became more and more elaborate. In the Baroque time, the treble, or alto recorder, became the most popular, the most widely used instrument. It's tuned in F, meaning if I close all finger holds, um, you can hear an F. That doesn't mean, of course, that I can only play in F or in F major. I can play all chromatics and in all keys on this instrument. I can go beyond that, and composers like Georg Philipp Telemann do use notes that go above um, that high F that I just played. I'll demonstrate that, however I will have to use my knee to stop the bottom end of the recorder to play roughly every other note. Um, that's about the highest note that I um, will ever be asked to play. Um, I mentioned Telemann earlier. He does use that note in his Telemann F major concerto in the second movement. <laughs> Apart from the most common treble, um, there is of course also the descant recorder, which is definitely mo the most widely spread today. It's in C, so the lowest note is a C. 
There is not a huge amount for music specifically asking for a descant or soprano recorder, um, but there is one very popular piece um, that's played a lot today by Giuseppe Sammartini, who was an Italian who moved to London to make his fortune there as a musician and composer. Um, and he played the recorder, but also other wind instruments. And he probably wrote this concerto for descant recorder and orchestra to be played in the interval um, of a theatre or opera performance where he was playing in the orchestra. The interesting thing about the piece is that in the manuscript, so in the original um, score, um, the recorder part is written out in a different key to the string parts. And that was simply because people didn't really know how to read um, music for this instrument in C. So in order to not have to transpose, the part was written out transposed. Another size of recorder that was often used by composers, for example, to imitate birdsong, was the flautino or the sopranino recorder. Some of you might have come across the flautino or the sopranino in the context of Vivaldi's three concertos for this tiny little recorder. It was brilliant for imitating the virtuosity that Vivaldi himself could have achieved on the violin. Apart from those smaller sizes of recorder, there are of course also bigger ones. This instrument I'm holding here now is a voice flute. It's in D, so the same lowest note as on the transverse flute, the Baroque flute. Um, it was developed in France, again for the orchestra of Lully, um, and it was probably um, developed to have an instrument that would match the voice um, in vocal music um, even better than the treble recorder. I've already said it has the same a lowest note as the flute, which means we can play flute repertoire on the recorder keeping it in the original key and original sound world as well because like on the Baroque flute there are certain keys, certain fingerings that will produce different sounds depending on whether they're strong fingerings where there's for example three fingers in a row or weaker fingerings including half holes or fork fingerings as we call them where there's a hole missed out, a finger hole open. There are many prolific composers who wrote for the recorder, including Johann Sebastian Bach, Georg Philipp Telemann, Georg Friedrich Händel, and also Marc-Antoine Charpentier. And one very famous piece by him, which 
most people will recognise today is the Te Deum and in it um, there are some beautiful arias for two recorders and we also get to play in the opening movement usually asked to play on a higher instrument um, so we can cut through the texture of trumpets, oboes, strings and basso continuo. <laughs> 